Assalamu alaikum. How are you? Alhamdulillah. How, are you? How is everything, Brother Wadu? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Doing well. Alhamdulillah. How are you? Very good. Very good. I would just uh, mention, okay, we have someone from Northern Ireland. Well, we love Ireland. Y'all oh, have wow. been amazing, mashallah. <laughs> very it's, supportive yeah. of the Palestinians. Subhanallah. Subhanallah. I was just watching a video of uh, people in Ireland, how they're standing up. Mashallah. It's beautiful. Oh, alhamdulillah. We have a si uh, sister or perhaps that, we have someone from Nigeria and from France. Bonjour. <laughs> it took uh, a semester of French. Did it? get too far with that but i i was just talking brother Wadud, about how um and we were talking about this earlier this week how we're going through a slump right it's very easy during the second week uh second or is it the third week yeah. now that we this is into... our um today's our um 18th day of ramadan right right yes 18 yes. yesterday was a really significant day the day of Badr. Ah, and okay. may Allah grant the Ummah the openings ah, like mean. Allah granted us in Badr inshallah and that expansion may Allah grant ah, us mean. that ah, mean. Yeah, when you reflect on the verses of how Allah talks about how he will reinforce you and protect you and provide support as long as you're sincere it gives you so much hope subhanallah bismillah wa salatu wa salam ala rasulullah we have someone from North Carolina so happy to have you all here so today we have a really uh, wonderful, wonderful lesson, mashallah. Brother Wadud, would you like to start? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Yeah, so it's, we're, we're asking this question about who are you becoming, right? So you've been, you've been with us, and for this last few, last few weeks, you have been listening to our conversations, all the beautiful interviews, and mm -hmm. this question that me and Sister Holly wanted to ask today is, who are you becoming this Ramadan? Those of you that are tuning in live, mm -hmm. put it in the chat window. Who are you becoming? What does the best version of you look like post-Ramadan, right? And this who you are becoming, well, how does it show up? Mm -hmm. How does it show up when you're preparing suhoor or iftar? Or how does it show up in your character? How does it show up in your relationship, mm -hmm. in your marriage, in your parenting? How does who you're becoming this Ramadan show up in everything you do? That's because, the question we want mm -hmm. you to reflect on. Yes. Yeah. And if you could put that in the chat, because we want to find out where are you at and where do you want to be afterwards? Because we know that Ramadan isn't just about fasting, right? It is a time for spiritual growth and reflection. And we want to make sure that we nurture these qualities. I have an analogy for you. Are y'all ready? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my daily, my, my daily analogy. All right. right. So we need to look at it. Look at Ramadan is like a farmer. What does a farmer do? They prepare the soil, sows the seeds and tends to their, um, to their land, right? With care and Ramadan, we need to see it as like a fertile ground for spiritual growth, right? And we're planting the seeds, but after Ramadan, we have to continue nurturing the seeds of faith, right? And the good deeds we've planted, we need to water them. We need to make consistent effort and make that devotion to see them flourish, right? So this is what we're talking about, that we're planting the seeds. And then after Ramadan, we got to make sure that we water it daily and we um, make sure that we keep improving, inshallah. Mm, yeah, yeah. And Allah SWT uses this analogy so many times in the Quran, right? Mm. Who plants the seed? When you plant the seed, yeah. who brings that seed? turns that into mm. plan and brings it out. So that gardener's mindset, you know, mm -hmm. that um, it's so important for Muslims because sometimes we want to do it all at once. We want change right away. So this is something that we want you to think about is visualize your best self and start mm. becoming, uh, you know, start becoming more in that journey. But even if it is just a little bit more, even if it is just right. that, shift in your heart and the quality of your heart and presence of Allah and your intention, just even that much of a shift, mm. but doing, if you do that consistently, then it can help you grow to this beautiful tree bearing fruits 
in mm-hmm. time, you know, in like few months, yeah. in few years, and just that consistency, small but consistent, how does that really impact and change who you are? Absolutely, absolutely. And I just, I always look at the litmus test of whether my Ramadan is going well or not, right? Um, yeah. If it's, if I'm really connecting, remember like we are, am I really charging my phone? Have I charged uh, myself spiritually or not? I look at the litmus test is the relationships. How mm. have my relationships with, whether it's my spouse, my children, uh, my family members, how has that improved? Has it changed? And I'd like to ask all of you tuning in, do you feel like there has been a change in your relationship? And has it been for the better or for the worse, right? Because sometimes we become irritable. We're not getting enough sleep. We might get the headaches like I was talking about, or you have more extra work. So, um, you know, we have to see like, how how is your relationship improving? Yeah. And we have yeah. a nice comment for you, Brother Wadu. Thanks to a lecture you gave to a group of sisters about mindfulness. Alhamdulillah, oh, my inshallah. intention this Ramadan is inshallah to be more mindful. Mission accomplished. <laughs> that was <Thank> our <laughs> that was what we wanted to do, mashallah. It's like Allah and Brother Wadu. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, yeah, so alhamdulillah. So, you know, this is a really important question that you've asked. Jazakallah khair for sharing that. May Allah bless you, inshallah. So, so glad to hear. May Allah make all of our work and all of your work of lasting impact benefit. May Allah accept, for, accept from all of us. So in terms of this question you're asking, the litmus test, why? Mm-hmm. Why is it the litmus test? Why can't someone just pray and do all good deeds, you know, and just, just really cry all night and get up and do qiyam? And all of that, right? But but they, um, you know, they, they it doesn't show up in their character. Mm. Why can't why can they um, have taqwa? That's a, you know, some people might say, you know, like okay, I I haven't gotten that relationship thing down yet. <laughs> you know, I'm not really worried about that. Just right. trying to trying to get it one step at a time, right? Right. Can't, right. Can't, can't someone Let live me- like that? Check off the well, you know, we have to look at the whole purpose of the Prophet Sallallahu has said that he came to complete our character, right? And so mm. if we look at all of this worship we're doing as a way to build our character, it's not we've always we keep repeating that Allah is not in need of these things, it's to change us. And if we look at let's say Hajj. Before Hajj, what is the prerequisite? We have to mend our relationships. And Allah holds each person accountable for their relationship with others. So no matter how amazing your relationship is with Allah, you're doing the Hajj every night and you're fasting and you're doing all of this, but you're treating your spouse, your children, your family members, your parents with disrespect, with harshness, you're rude to them, you ignore them, you, you know, you are dismissive of them, then, you know, you're going to be in trouble. So in one area, you're going to have an A plus, And then maybe in four subjects, you're going to have an F. And we know how that would work. What would happen in school if you have one A plus and then four Fs? <laughs> yeah. And you know okay. this is this is a really important, really really important thing to to think about. Mm-hmm. That if if we if our heart is not clean in terms of my relationships, that the Sahaba they mentioned that we used to we used to feel scared to enter the month mm-hmm. of Ramadan without cleaning. Like we would be like literally scared if we had anything in our heart against anyone, and we're entering Ramadan. You know, like mm. this is something that, and that's why the, the, we mentioned it before that the Nisfu Shaban, the 15th of Shaban, the Hadith that mm. Allah looks at his creation, he forgives them. This is like Allah getting us ready, you know, for Ramadan. And, and mm. that specific thing mentioned that if somebody has malice in their heart, if somebody has, you know, this bad feeling, ill feeling against someone in their heart, right? Right. So that's, um, that's so important. And, and how can that, how can you go into taqwa? consciousness mm. of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala with that with having all of that in your heart and and that showing up in your relationship with people 
Right. And it all goes hand in hand, right? Because if we are not tending to those relationships, if we are not mindful of them, then that is going to eat away at us. It is going to affect our mood, our concentration, our ability to perform. And so if any of you have had, let's say, an argument with your spouse or your children have really made you angry or disappointed you, you know, it's really difficult to, to focus in, even in your prayers, it's hard to be productive. So we really need to see mending our relationships is just as important as getting our worship done. And that this is the whole objective of, um, of this Ramadan series, a mindful Ramadan. It's about being mindful of yourself, your thoughts, your emotions, your character, and then ultimately your relationship with others. So tell us about meditation, um, Brother Wadud. Yeah. This is something that one of the teachers, you know, mentioned, one of the scholars mentioned that meditation, mm -hmm. you know, like we've been talking about being mindful and Meditation is something that's been used, you know, now, mm -hmm. now it's, it's one of those things that's proven to improve your mental health and emotional wellness and your focus and the mind training, right. you know, like uh, now the common, I think, mainstream definition is like, it's a, it's a group of family of practices that help you train your mind, right? Mm -hmm. Meditation. But when we think about like meditation in Islam, when you think about meditation right. in our deen, can we can we go and meditate in the forest, in the jungle, in the mountains and become a monk and mm. just have this amazing relationship with Allah, right? And can we have this beautiful relationship with Allah like, man, there's nobody else mm -hmm. to bug me, nobody right. else to bother me, all these people, I'm just fed up with the world, right? Mm -hmm. Now I'm just going into this place where I'm going to have my Zen and I'm going to get to my best self with just between me and God, mm -hmm. you know? And... And one of the scholars, he mentions that, you know, your meditation on the mountains and your meditation in the forest can lead you to vanity. But mm -hmm. when you when you learn to meditate in the middle of all your relationship, in the middle of all your people, you know, and you learn to connect to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the middle of all those challenges that you deal with with people every day, that's when you become the real, you know, seeker of God. That's when you really get to connect with God. And this is something so beautiful about the Prophet Sallallahu that he taught us that you know this ummah is not allowed mm. to go become a monk anymore we have to live with our families we have to live with our yeah. relationships and we have to meditate and contemplate and reflect and connect and make vicar in the middle of all of that so what right a beautiful challenge very very through. beautiful and i like uh what you had said uh, when we had met, I want to quote what you said, meditation on the mountains can lead to vanity. Meditation in the midst of people is the real flex. I thought that was, real that was brilliant. The real flex. <laughs> That's the real is, flex. Yeah. yeah, doing it in the midst of all that because we need to really look at meditation. It's not, you know, I think a lot of people visualize it as if like, you know, you're closing your eyes and you're going, um, you know, and you're kind of zoning out, but it's actually about zoning owning in and being more aware and regulating your emotions and um, much more present with the people around you. Yeah. Yeah. Going from going from autopilot to aware even yes. in the midst of like, how can you be alone with God? This is what our teachers and many of our classical scholars mentioned, like be alone with God, even in a crowd, you know, like mm. learn to be alone with God in yes. the middle of a crowd. And this is this is the gift of connecting your heart and not mm. nobody knowing. And to the point that the Prophet said, there would be people that nobody knows and nobody is pointing their finger, but if they raise their hand and they swear by mm. Allah, Allah will immediately answer their du'as. And these are people that, you know, even without anyone noticing, you have that deep connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That's beautiful, mashallah. You know, we I uh, emphasize a lot in, in my counseling on self-talk. And when you talked about, when you brought up right now, this uh, being with Allah, I thought about also that dialogue, that constant dialogue we have with Allah, 
And that can help us so much. I mean, there's so many times that I'm I'm praying for wisdom from Allah. Ya Allah, help me to say the right thing in the right way. And yeah. um, and when we have that constant dialogue, it really keeps us in check. That that we are under surveillance. Our actions are being recorded, and we're going to be judged on it. And there are consequences. And as long as you have that mindfulness, then it really like you are able to stay. Um, you, you're staying in the hudud of Allah, the boundaries that Allah has established. Yeah, yeah. And, you know, that can we, can we have, you know, um, can we, can we swear? Can we lie? Can we be abusive with our tongue? Can we have, mm. can a Muslim, you know, someone who has taqwa, who has consciousness of God, can they really have that bad character while they have taqwa? while mm -hmm. they are mindful of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that's so difficult to, they, 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 they just don't go together. They just don't they go don't. together. They don't, they yeah. don't. It's really the heedlessness, the carelessness, the forgetting. But as long as you keep that in mind, it's kind of like when uh, you know that there, you, you get that radar and you know the police officer is right there. Everyone is much more careful in their driving because they realize there's going to be consequences. And if we can develop that ihsan to live in a way that we realize Allah is constantly watching us and, and really rake in the ajr by um by our relationships the way that we interact with our uh with our children with our spouse with our parents and see that as the as a way to jannah that that is it's a very transformative very transformative when we start looking at our relationship as a way to jannah yeah because you know it's not just about because we don't worship our emotions mm -hmm. a lot of times we, we feel good. We're on like emotional high, you know, when we are able to get away from all people and just have some focus, our own time. Or, that's important, right? We, we need that. But if we do too much of that and we're just in that zone of like where we just mm -hmm. want to be alone, we don't want to mix with any people and we don't want to deal with our relationship. We don't want to take care of, you know, our, our obligations in our relationships. And we just would rather just go have my time and feel good, right? But the thing is that, you know, Emotions are important, but emotions are at the end of the day creation of Allah. And mm. we use any emotion, every emotion as a means to get to Jannah. So right. you can't just go to Jannah just by being happy all your life. You're <laughs> going to have sadness in your life and you're going to have to use that emotion to go to Jannah as well. You're going to have, you know, you're going to have difficult emotions of patience and heartbreak and rejection and, you know, anger and, and all of that emotions you're going to have. When you live with, when you mm -hmm. take care of your relationships and when you regulate those or when despite those emotions, when you still worship Allah, you don't worship your emotion, all of these emotions are going to be means for you to go to Jannah. Yes, this is such a critical point that you bring up that it's not just, you know, we can't be so consumed with our emotions. Look at it as as a, I, I like to call it like signs in the road of life, right? When you have an emotion and it's telling you something, if you're feeling anger, there's a reason for it. If you're feeling insecure, there's a reason. So you, you kind of look at it and it's a mystery. You want to solve this mystery, understand it. And, and then <clears throat> learn how to use all of those emotions as a way, as you said, get closer to Allah. And it's usually the epiphanies happen with heartbreak, with disappointment, with uh, some kind of loss. No one has an epiphany when they're... Um, usually like in the middle of a dance floor, right? There's no epiphany when they are sailing in a, you know, on a boat. It's usually when, it's, you know, you get those difficult news and you you are disappointed and you're hurt. So we, we really need to embrace all of those emotions, subhanAllah. Alhamdulillah, yeah. So your yeah. salah this Ramadan, like this last 10 nights, of course, you have to make a plan to really stand mm. and, and have deep connection with Allah, make deep du'as, your qiyams, your Qur'an. There is beautiful connection that you're making with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, but mm. don't forget the end goal. The end goal is how can you get closer to God and closer to your best self? That, yeah. that all of that is helping you get forgiveness from Allah, cleanse from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and cleanse not just your sins of the past, 
but cleanse your bad habits, your bad character, mm. your anything that brings you up in the less than ideal way in your relationship. So when you come out of your salah, you should be this person that's connected to God and show mm -hmm. that God-centered mercy and rahma in your relationship. Because the rahma reflects, yeah. Allah says, Oh, Prophet of Allah, that the, the, re the, the reason they were so gentle with them is mm -hmm. because of the rahma and the mercy of Allah. And we know that we are getting mercy when you're reading Quran, when you're reading, yes. getting mercy when you're making dua, when you're making dhikr, when you're making salah. So how can we use that rahma and now embody the prophetic rahma and mm. step out with those rahma in our relationship as well? So critical for us to connect that the rahma that we are getting from Allah in our worship and then transmitting that to our loved ones. So could you just, uh, those of you who are tuning in right now, let us know, do you feel a difference in your relationships? Are you applying a little bit more of a mindfulness? Do you feel that anything has changed? Because if we really look at the relationships as a litmus test of how well my worship is, then that is, you know, that will give us a clue. And, um, and we can always improve ourselves and improve our relationships. I know it's very difficult, especially if you get in a rut, like in your marriage, you could uh, get on each other's nerves after some time. There could be uh, things that really are upsetting or you're so hurt and disappointed. You know, there's sometimes uh, couples come in. And they don't even want to sit on the same couch next to each other. Oh. There are times when I tell them, you know, to, to hold hands. They don't want to hold hands. They, they are just fed up and frustrated and angry. So if you're in that situation, just make a commitment right now that, you know what, for the sake of Allah, for, you know, for that sake of becoming a better version of myself, I'm going to make an effort. Now, I never, and, and this is always a disclaimer I have to give, I, I never encourage anyone to stay in an abusive relationship. So if you're in an abusive relationship, you need to you know, seek help for that. But if it's just annoyances, we all have certain annoyances in our, in our marriages, and we need to be able to overcome them. So let's see. Oh, yes, before I speak to my clients, I say the dua of Musa, that connection with Allah is there. MashaAllah, you have that mindfulness before you help out. That That's beautiful. What about, I'm not hearing anyone talking about their relationships. Is that on purpose? Yeah. Is that... <laughs> What we've got to we've got to we've got to hear more about your Ramadan relationship repair, Sister Holly. Okay, sure. You know, um, I feel that R R Ramadan is a great time to work on your relationship because it is. You know, we are at a iman high, shayatin are locked up, and reward is tripled, multiplied, and so this is is a free service, is a free series. Uh, videos that can help you in your relationships if you'd like to get it. Um, I'm not sure if we have anyone on that could uh, send the link and it'll help you. It'll help you to work on your relationship. So if you're stuck and you feel that um, you need a little bit of support because you can't do it on your own, it gives you some good pointers. Mm. Yeah. Did you want to share some nuggets from that? Sure. You know, it's um, as far as, you know, with a Ramadan, making improvement in your relationship, be the change you want to see, right? A lot of times people come in and say, I want more attention from my spouse. And I say, well, give more attention. I need more affection. Start giving more affection. And it's so, um, it's incredible when you see that the person that is really dying for that, let's say, attention. And they're just sitting and waiting for the, their spouse to change. And it usually, what happens if you're waiting for your spouse to change? You're going to be disappointed. But when you step up and you start maybe giving more love, giving more attention, giving more affection, then it's automatic. Unless someone has maybe some kind of psychological disorder, or they're very narcissistic, but generally mm -hmm. a person starts reciprocating. Yeah, yeah. And there is this beautiful hadith that I really love, 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 you know, about mm -hmm. Ramadan. And it goes like this. And, and Ubadah ibn Samit, radiallahu anhu ta'ala, and 
um, he narrated from an Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam called Yoma wa hadarana Ramadan, Atakum Ramadan, Shahul Baraka. And the, when Ramadan came near, the, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, you know, he would be talking about the Ramadan and he would say, Ramadan is Ramadan has come, it's a, Ram it's a month of Baraka. But yeah. something that really beautiful in this hadith that Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam mentions, there are a few things that he mentions mm -hmm. that Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala, that Yandru Allah Ta'ala ila tanafusikum. Allah mm. looks at your competition for good deeds. Oh, so, wow. so, so this competition for good deeds, you know, like how can we be of competition? Who can serve the other person better? In oh, house? That's a beautiful who can be way. Of, who can be of more, more service to each mm. other? Who can be, who can have more rahmah and compassion in the house? Who can help out more? Who can mm. uh, really help out and, and, and help with iftar or suhoor, you know, or help clean up? or yeah. help uh, each other or um, be this really kind person to lift each other up that competition don't just mm. restrict it to your how many rakats or how many yeah. number of pages and du'as which is really important right but also 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 expand it to uh. who can be better and why can husband and wife you know like a lot of times people like a lot of my i know a lot of my younger cousins the younger generations are growing up in the in the in the age of isms right individualism mm -hmm. and the feminism and, and all of these other isms. And it's so important, you know, that we keep reminding them because they come to me and my wife a lot of times because we're the older cousins. We got married, you know, way before them. Right. And they ask us for advice. And, you know, we have our ups and downs. We have our challenges. Sure. We've gone through all marriages do. And we just talk to them and say, you know, why can't they were like, oh, I want my husband to do this and do that. And I don't want to, you know, and this is the type of husband I want, you know, from a lot of our, of our girl cousins to the point mm -hmm. that it almost feels like, you know, like not, they want almost like a revenge for all mm -hmm. the things that men have done in the ages, you know, like in the century, like <laughs> the, the previous generation, oh, my dad just sat there and my mom did all these things. And mm -hmm. so now I want my husband to do this. So we, we all, me and my wife, we talk about it and say, why can't you compete with each other on who can serve the other person more? Ah, uh, that that is an incredible motto to have. Was those who race with each other. And as a husband and wife, you bring up a really good point because sometimes they compete in how much they earn. Sometimes they compete in, like you said, the I finished this many times, you know, or I finished the Quran this many times. But if you compete in serving one another. I think that's beautiful. Let's see. We have some individuals, um, both me and my spouse, remind each other to pray. My mindset is when he rises, I rise and vice versa. That's that's beautiful. So you're reminding each other. Would you like to take this one, Brother Wadud? Yeah. The one that is talking about um, tips for repairing relationship with the parent. Who has okay. a different faith? Is that the one that you, you asked um, about? I'm just, we just have this one up. Alhamdulillah, I have a very good relationship with my family. And oh, let's yes. see. Yeah. You can take this one. The tips for repairing relationship with a parent who has a different faith. I was looking at the chat uh, mm. comment. Yeah, this is something that, subhanAllah, you know, it's not just different faith, but we've seen this challenge, not just with different faith, but also parents of our own faith. And we're seeing sure. the newer generation, how they have, they don't want to do anything. They have, they want nothing to do with their parents once they get yeah. to a certain age, you know? Right. So it's amazing because we have to think about, you know, when, when Suleiman came of age, the dua that he made. And remember that one of the purpose of Siyam, Kutiba alaykum Siyam, Allah says, la'alakum tatakun, and later Allah says, la'alakum tashkurun. And, that so that you become more mindful, more conscious, more aware. You don't snap on autopilot. You don't just like snap back. You just, just react. You are tatsakun. You are aware. You move from autopilot to aware. You you enter things with intention. You you make the effort. You know to be more conscious, more aware. And like Sister Holly was saying, it's an amazing advice Sister Holly that he gave in terms of tune in and be the person you want to be. Like you show you like okay, my parents never hugged me. My parents mm -hmm. never acknowledged me. My parents never loved me. My parents never said, I love you. You know, all of these things that we say, even when we're an adult. Yes, okay, write these down, reflect on them, understand that you have some issues around them, mm -hmm. you know, some things that you wished, you know, all of that. And do the work that you need to do. But at, at the end of the day, what if, what mm -hmm. if after you've done the inner work, after you come to awareness, you shift that to not just, 
living, you know, with the blame on the other person. Like but a lot of times what we, what happens is that whoever made a mistake, we the rest of our life, we justify what we do by blaming it on the other person. Oh, it was his fault, my mother's fault, my father's fault. They did this to me. But the thing is that, isn't that kind of a lazy way to live? Like if we think about the Sahaba and the Prophet, how much effort they made and what their parents did to them to drive them away from their city, their homes, mm -hmm. their everything, and how they forgave, how they mm -hmm. came back to Makkah and what they did. What's what's is that is that the right prophetic way to live to always shift mm -hmm. the blame on someone else and not show up with our best self instead? And we have to remember it's not your fault, right? If you went through that abuse or trauma, yes. but it is your responsibility. And if you just point the finger at other people, you live a miserable life, right? It's not only lazy, but it's miserable. So we have, let's see, I have a very toxic sister-in-law oh, wow. and brother-in-law. They've been physically abusive to me and my son scammed my husband out of a lot of money and been verbally abusive. Ya Allah, we're so sorry that you're Hello, going through you. that. SubhanAllah. Sometimes people get tested by their family members and it's very critical that you learn from this experience, you protect yourself because you don't necessarily have to be best friends with people no. in your family, especially if they're toxic, especially if they are taking advantage of you. Uh, but it's a matter of this one, I, I would say needs to, you need to delve into it and get, get some grounded advice, inshallah. Brother Wadud, would you like to yeah. say anything? Yeah, I think, I think um, speaking to a counselor or someone that can help through the steps are going to be important. Just this uh, webinar is not going to be enough for this type of situation. But we always right. talk about this thing about abuse. Uh, abuse, like you don't, we don't take abuse. No physical abuse, mm -hmm. not tolerated. Uh, immediately boundaries around it. No need to, you know, keep up all the different, you know, good things that you want to do in your hearts. Make dua, but keep distance. Keep some yeah. boundaries and don't get into a place where you know so that get into a place where you can completely protect yourself from abuse first and foremost that's absolutely. really absolutely absolutely so we're going to shift the discussion a little bit now into we're talking about relationships and marriage what do you see and i want all of you who are tuning in to answer this what are some of the key challenges that um what are some of the key challenges about women shared by men what are you, what do you think? <laughs> what do you think, brother Wadud? What are some of the... Yeah. What are some key challenges about women shared by men? Okay, so what do men complain mm -hmm. about? Or yes, what do men... Yes. <laughs> what, are, what are all the, you know, like top uh, complaints of the men, right? About yes. their women, right? Like that? Okay. Let me think. Let me think. Uh, Alhamdulillah. It's just, uh, it, <laughs> well, let me jump the, with you. Yeah, do you want to hear from others? Are they putting, yeah, yeah let's, let's hear from see. the audience. Yeah, let's, let's hear from the audience. Hear. I will, maybe I'll start off with one. Okay. A lot of times it's like a lack of emotional regulation, right? It's this yeah. about my wife just freaks out, overreacts. She has these meltdowns. So that, that seems to be a very frequent complaint. Anything mm. else? Yeah. We've, there's also um, sometimes a power struggle, you know, when with a husband and wife, there's a power struggle yeah. and um, and some immaturity. Yeah. Like not giving me my the respect that I deserve because men, you know, yes. they're 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 first one of the top things is always about respect. Yes. So, yeah. Being disrespected. Exactly. And we should pose this as well. What are some of the key challenges about men shared by women? So what are women's complaints? Let's see. Okay. Let us know you're awake by responding. <laughs> this is, you know, when we're doing a live and um, the your involvement, your engagement, asking, responding, fuels us as speakers, right? right? right we right. get fueled. Oh, when you are uh, responding, we feel like, yes, you're tuning in. But um, what do you think are some of the complaints about, about men? Alhamdulillah. So, yeah, so <laughs> there is quite a few, you know, uh, not, not showing love enough. 
mm-hmm. not, not lack showing of love. affection. Love and affection is one of those. And then also not having the emotional intelligence yes. to understand. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big one. Not having the emotional intelligence, not listening, right? Maybe being yeah. too being controlling. Out, very difficult to make them hear anything. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Too controlling. So these are things that as, you know, men and women, we really, uh, we struggle with. And I focus my attention on on women with like with mindful hearts and helping them to be like a a better version of themselves, learning the emotional intelligence and how to control their emotions, how to be in control of all that. And um, there's been a lot of requests, a lot of the women, because they've seen their relationships improve, alhamdulillah, they're like, well, what about the men? The men need this. The men need to learn how to be a better version of themselves. So we have, uh, this is our special announcement. Brother Wadud, would you right. like to okay. do the honor? Okay, we're right there. We're right we? there. We're at the <laughs> <laughs> oh, we can, we can hold off. <laughs> Let's announce with the salawat. So Allah put barakah in it. Bismillah. Uh-huh. Oh, there you go. Sister Susan is giving us a little pointer there. We need a male version of Mindful Hearts. <laughs> ah, Suzanne. Good job. High five, Suzanne. <laughs> All right. So, yes, men, they're wanting to fix things instead of just listening, which is what is needed sometimes. All right. Yeah. And, um, let's see. I lost my husband in Afghanistan, so I can't really comment here. Okay, um, yeah. May Allah raise him to the highest level of Jannah and give you give you sabr, sister. We need a male version of Mindful Hearts. You are just like leading right up to this. We did not plan this. Yeah, <laughs> You'll yeah. have to call it something different. <laughs> well, right. we've got just the thing. Oh, mashallah, tabarakallah, that's amazing. Oh, okay, so drum roll, please. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Bismillah. Bismillah. Yeah. So tell us, Sister Holly, what is it? Well, we want to hear from you. <laughs> yeah, sure. So we are doing uh, mindful masculinity. Isn't that amazing? So M squared, mindful masculinity. It is all about learning to be, you know, for men to improve themselves. And we have, we're going to have the wisdom and the experience of, mashallah, brother Wadud Hassan. You have seen him, you've heard him, you know how much he has to offer. And this is going to be incredible insight on, you know, prophetic emotional intelligence. There's going to be, you know, this awareness. Um, I will also be appearing and my husband, Abdul Majid and mashallah, we're going to share from a, you know, from a relationship perspective. And he, he has given some really good advice to some, you know, when men get married, he gives them a talk and, <laughs> and they always remember, right? they remember that talk and mashallah changed yeah, a yeah. lot of relationship, but, uh, brother, we do please give us your, uh, perspective and, uh, inshallah, this is exciting. We do need men to step up and be their best self, right? Yes. And a lot of times I've been talking to the men and I've been doing a Qutba series where I, you know, especially, you know, hammer the man a little bit and say, you know, when are we going to really grow up, you know, as yeah. men? Mm. When are we going to really adult? And when mm-hmm. are we going to work on our self-doubt? A lot of our men, they're going through the self-doubt. They, yes. they, they haven't claimed their confidence or their God-centered purpose and meaning in life. Mm. And they're like basically, you know, going to work, coming home and seeking all these validation through that masculine, you know, like control and, um, and, and not understanding that, that that validation comes from finding deep meaning within yourself, mm. deep meaning with God, finding your purpose, finding your best self. And so they haven't worked on self-doubt. They haven't worked on guilt. Mm-hmm. They haven't worked on, fear their fears their anger so a lot of it then comes back to the way they show up with their family yes. and their kids spouse so it's so important for men to do the yes. inner work you did do the inner yes. work and me and me and brother abdul majid are talking about you know how to get them through of course this the neuroscience the intersection between islamic psychology and neuroscience get them yes. through like how can we get men to be introspective how can we get them from out of autopilot to aware how can we get them to really have a a routine of you know finding their best self through practices you know that they can commit to that can get them to to their best self but also 
you know, that after that initial emotional wellness, fitness, you know, mindful masculinity course, also after the content, hold their hand a little bit for some coaching mm -hmm. on challenges yes. they're having, sometimes maybe at their career, you know, like me and Abdullah Majid has, have both been in leadership and running our companies yes. and organizations. So how can we also hold them, hold their hands and helping them become the best leaders? You know, first yes. work with your inner self, overcome that emotional intelligence issue, the mindfulness issue. And then once you have the spiritual, emotional grounding, build on it, become your yes. best version of yourself as a leader at work, at home, wherever you are. Inshallah. It is amazing. I am so, so excited about this because, you know, for several years, I've been hearing it from a lot of the sisters. We need to do something. The men, the men, the men. And so now, mashallah, having you on board, brother Wadud, it is really, I think this is going to be a game changer because, you know, just like you said, men need to show up as a leader and there needs to be balance. And we have Suzanne, you're saying, I love it, mashallah. Love the name too, Mindful Masculinity, M Square the name mindful hearts wouldn't fly with guys <laughs> this is perfect <laughs> mashallah exactly exactly we need, more, we need more feedback from suzanne as we build this you know to what Alex. what's going to really fly with the men <laughs> Yeah, she's been always, mashallah, extremely supportive and always there. She's been on Mindful Hearts herself. So, uh, you know, what we see a lot or what I have seen in the past three decades in doing counseling is that masculinity is like people see it as like one of two extremes, right? Do you either have men who are very aggressive and controlling and they see that being a leader means being a tyrant. And then you have those who are complete doormats. They don't speak up and they're taken yeah. advantage of. And we know that the Prophet wasallam has taught us what is the, the prophetic masculinity. And that's something we're going to talk about. And so this is why it's so incredibly exciting because, you know, as we're changing ourselves, then, um, you know, during Ramadan, we don't want it to end, right? We want to continue. It's like, you can't go to the gym twice and say, okay, I'm done for the year, right? Or one month, I'm going to work out and then that's it. That's it. We, <laughs> we want it to be continuous. So this will be a community where you can um, continue your growth. And those of you who are sisters on here, I'm sure you have, you know, your maybe brothers, you have your sons, you have your husbands, cousins, individuals that you can share this with, inshallah, so that everybody can grow and um, and benefit. Such an important thing to do. And what, you know, a lot of times we see in the time that we're living in, um, men, we really have lost it because we are not going out there and learning those life skills anymore. Mm -hmm. You know, like men mm -hmm. had to get out and, you know, think about whether it's agriculture or whether it's the hunter gatherer or, you know, whether it's just getting out and learning to be in touch with your animals, just the emotional intelligence you learn, you know, like taking care of your, just maintaining your horse, for example, right. Mm. And the connection with your animals, feeding them, being with them, men learning to be alone, men learning to find themselves in the nature, you know, mindfulness was like, it was programmed in the way that people live because they didn't have distractions. They didn't have their apps. They didn't have their phones. So you'd right. go out in the nature and you sit in the nature and you sit for hours in the nature waiting for something, you know, waiting for someone or doing something that really connected to you and that, and it healed our brain that yes. being present, you know, and it's such um, the quality of that focus, quality of that understanding. But Males in general were given kind of like this rite of passage with yeah. their mentors where they learned these skills to become mm -hmm. a man from a boy to a man, you know, and that doesn't happen anymore where our kids are, you know, with their popcorns and their chips, you know, sitting on their, you know, lounging their couches in front of their video games and spending most of their, you know, teenage years and college years and not learning any of the life skills and not getting up. And some of yeah. the cultures have not really served the men, the boys, you know, yes. because they also don't call them to the kitchen and don't teach them how to mm -hmm. take care of and serve their families. So we, all of a sudden, we've trained our girls to do all of these things. And the boys are sitting on the couch, eating their chips, watching their video and doing their video games. And then what type of men are we going to raise from that? So that's a huge yes. problem. 
it's a huge problem. And like you said, a lot of the women are, it's like the pendulum has swung to the opposite extreme. They saw their moms doing everything. And it's like, now they're just like, I'm not doing anything. So we, we have a lot to work on as an Oma. And the reason a lot of marriages are falling apart is because the men are lacking that awareness. They're lacking that sense of, uh, you know, showing up, showing up for the family. And so this is what what is going to really, I feel is going to be transformative, inshallah. Inshallah, inshallah. So, you know, as we as we get close to wrapping today's today's um, you know, yes. webinar, going back to asking yourself about who are you going to become? Mm. Who are you going to become post this Ramadan? Who are you going to become? What what does the best version of yourself look like? Mm -hmm. So I would say, you know, we it's natural for us to have this you know dip towards the middle of ramadan when yes. we're starting to kind of like you know it becomes a sort of routine all of a sudden you're getting a little tired you need a little bit of that boost and yes. you want to get back up and push yourself for the last 10 nights it's it's okay to just in it, when this few few nights are happening leading up to next few nights leading up to the last 10 nights it's okay to just sit for a minute and maybe just reset your intention for the last 10 nights. Mm -hmm, reset, mm -hmm. you know, how are you going to show up with your best character? Yeah. How are you going to transform your relationships? How you're going to really have that deep connection, not just quantity, but how are you going to really be present in, with, the Quran, with your du'as? Yes. Your Don't be discouraged. Don't be discouraged. You know, I, I think we both were talking about how uh, different circumstances in our lives happen and, and, you know, the momentum could kind of slow down, but it's how you finish the race, right? It is how you finish the race. And the uh, sister Iman is saying, I will direct my young sons, age 21 and 22 to this link. Inshallah, they will benefit greatly. Jazakallah khair for your great work and service to Muslims globally. Oh, that's very, that's very kind. Mashallah says, my wish is to remain in peace with the Qadr of Allah about my current life situation. Oh, that that's that's beautiful. If we can all accept our current situation. Now, you know what just occurred to me, Brother Wadud? What would be an amazing thing is giving this as an Eid gift. Right? Oh. <laughs> to... That'd be amazing. That'd be great to continue <laughs> to... that. Yes. You know, these, are, these are the best things that I mean, I feel like some of the courses and classes and, and yeah. coachings that I have done are probably the best things that I've done. Right. Whether it's, it was in my in my Arabic studies or my Islamic studies yeah. or there are times that I've invested in just in my mindfulness or emotional intelligence certifications or courses and classes. Yes. You never you never regret those things because it helps you grow to a better version of yourself when you learn, when you surround yourself with people that are seeking their best self. And it's so important to be in that community with, with the good content, yes. coaching, and the community. So important to invest in yourself. It really, really is. I can say that for every course that I have ever signed up for, especially self-development, whatever that has made me more aware of who I am, what makes me tick, what can make me, you know, regulate myself better, show up and be a better version of myself. And I have spent, uh, alhamdulillah, thousands of dollars on, on those self-development programs. And I can honestly say that it was the best investment. So inshallah, yeah. we are going to be very uh, excited to continue continue this so this is not going to end in ramadan we're going to uh you know grow this community and help help the men inshallah to show up and sisters if you're not on the mindful hearts you know you could you could do a mindful hearts your husband does the mindful masculinity and together you're going to be amazing <laughs> it will be a, a really great uh improvement inshallah how yes, about yes. um should we go ahead and see can y'all put some nuggets of what you're walking away with today anything that kind of resonated and um something that you're walking away with as far as today and brother wadud if you could yeah. also i will share yeah. i'll share my screen just uh for a sure. second and um share this heart model think about reflect on this model and don't forget, you know, the mindfulness, like whenever you're triggered, 
-hmm. whenever you're triggered, take a few deep breaths. We talked about the strategies of grounding yourself, your mind, focusing your mind, releasing the mm -hmm. tension from your body, focusing your heart, and then coming and then making your intentions. And a lot of times that prophetic silence, you know, they in the in the field of psychology now in this in the emotional regulation, they call it like the sacred pause, mm -hmm. you know, like the sacred pause, the prophetic silence is such an important thing when you are triggered in your relationships and your mm -hmm. character and just just pausing and then just doing the breath work and making vicar, adding vicar as a Muslim, you know, activating your heart and then not re reacting and waiting, taking some mm -hmm. time to craft your response and get to your best self and say, even in your mind, think like, what would the prophetic, what would a prophetic response be like? Even if you're not ready, mm -hmm. just bring that to your mind and take some time to cultivate that silence, that reflection. And you don't always have to react or respond right away. Wait, wait. The best Maybe thing is to, the best thing is to be quiet because, you know, yeah. when you are triggered and you're angry, your brain, all of the brain shuts down except for fight or flight. And that's why people become so reactionary. So you're going to learn, uh, for those of you who will get onto the mindful masculinity, so many tools in how to manage your anger, how to show your affection, how to really show up and balance and not to be a doormat. Definitely, we don't need doormats. That's not the prophetic way and, and not to be a tyrant. So you're going to find that middle path, the prophetic masculinity, inshallah. So that's going to be amazing. And I would like to just make um, some dua for our, um, for everyone tuning in. May Allah heal your hearts. May Allah help. May Allah help us all to heal our hearts. May Allah help us to overlook the shortcomings of our of our spouse, of our children, of our parents. Ya Allah help us to really forgive sincerely this Ramadan. Ya Allah help us to see our relationships as a litmus test of our worship. And if we have been failing so far, Ya Allah help us to finish strong. Ya Allah get us back on track. Ya Allah, help us to have the motivation the way the Sahaba and the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam had. Ya Allah, help us to finish this race strong and help us to really work on ourselves, do the inner work and let our relationships thrive after Ramadan, Ya Rab, and help us in all the difficulties that we are facing. Ya Allah, remove the difficulties, remove the stress. Ya Allah, increase the risk and help us in every endeavor. And Ya Allah, help our brothers and sisters in Palestine, no matter what we're going through, they have such a challenging time. May Allah help them and save them and cure them and feed them, Ya Rab, and make this madness stop, Ya Rab. Would you like to add to that dua, Brother Wadud? Alhamdulillah. May Allah grant the healing to our brothers and sisters in Palestine. May Allah Amen. give them the beautiful visualization of His nur and His light and His rahmah and His compassion. And that no one can hurt their soul and their ruh. They are protected Amen. by Allah. They are saved Amen. by Allah. They're in the company of Allah, the Shuhada may Allah accept from them. Amen. And this world, it'll it'll act, it'll feel like a second or a split second, or it'll not even they'll not remember mm. any of the sufferings when Allah dips them mm. in, in the in this beautiful paradise mm. in genital for those, even for a split second. May Allah grant them that Amen. tranquility and open up Jannah in their hearts. And their rahmah Amen. and their sakina. Allah feed them from His infinite treasures and unlimited provisions. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, through their sacrifice and their sacrifice, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala open the doors of deen and guidance for the entire ummah to come Amen. back to Allah and to His deen and to see haq as haq and see batil Amen. as batil. May Allah Amen. grant us to get to our best self. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala heal our brothers and sisters, grant them afiyah. May Allah. Everything we've talked Amen. about in this in this series, alhamdulillah, thank, we thank you for your blessing. Anything good we have said is because of your tawfiq and your kindness, your rahmah. Anything that we have said that is not good, ya Allah, it is because of our shortcomings and our nafs. Ya Allah, protect us from our nafs. Forgive Amen. us in our shortcomings. Amen. And accept from us. Allah, Rabbana taqabbal minna. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Rabbana taqabbal minna. Inna ka samiul alim. Allah, please accept from us. All the tools we've been talking about for mm -hmm. how to show up with a mindful heart, how to show up with good quality, how to show up, Ya Allah, with mindfulness and purpose and gratitude oh. and shukr and sabr and rahmah. Ya Allah, these beautiful prophetic Amen. qualities. 
teach us how to, teach us the tools, teach us the practice. Ya Allah, give us tawfiq to benefit from, Ya Allah, everything that we have talked about more than we have said or shared. Give us ourselves the rectification and correction and this istiqama and steadfastness on those tools. Amen. Amen. Closer to you and closer to our best self. And everybody that's been listening, Allah, please guide them, protect them, Amen. bless them, and give them tawfiq to continue their journey with the beautiful content and coaching and community that can help continuously transform and them and continue to get them to journey to their best Amen. self. Ya Allah, forgive all of us that have been speaking Amen. or listening, our guests, forgive our families, protect us Amen. from all harm, and Amen. continue to increase us in all khair and all good. Give us that visualization of what's the best self, what does our best self look like spiritually and emotionally and physically, financially, occupationally. And once Amen. you've given us that clarity and the vision, Ya Allah, do not let us deviate from that. We ask you for protection from losing our blessings and then Amen. losing our vision and losing our our momentum and our our clean and clear path and tawfiq for continuous movement towards that best self, that best vision of ourselves. Rabbana la tuzikulubana. Once you have guided us, say Allah, do not deviate our heart once you have guided us to that vision, mm -hmm. once you have guided us with these tools, once you have guided us to the tools and content and coaching and community. Ya Allah, la rahma. Give us the tawfiq through your rahma. Inna ka antal wahhabi. We love to keep on giving and keep on giving and keep on giving. Out of your beautiful name, wahhab and mujib, ar-Rahman, rahim salam, ma'afu. Ya Allah, with your beautiful names, we ask you to accept all of these du'as, grant us protection Amen. from all harm, and grant us beautiful tawfiq and steadfastness and continuous increase in all khair and all good. Amen. Amen. Alhamdulillah. Rabbil Alameen. Oh, mashallah. What a, what a comforting and soothing du'a. Jazakallah khairan for that. Mashallah. Beautiful comments coming in that... Fixing our relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not enough and we need to be mindful of how we treat others. That is, that, that's everything we've been talking about in a nugget, mashallah. Yeah, and, and actually, actually, it is the fixing of your relationship with Allah actually means when it, your relationship is fixed with his creation because yes. that is when you really have fixed your relationship with Allah. Beautiful, beautiful. Jazakallah khair for this webinar. Barakallahu fikum. As Sir Samra is saying, thank you so much for this. I've always told my husband and son about you. I have one son who is a newlywed and also my husband will benefit, inshallah. Inshallah. Well, we're very excited to, to start this and we will, inshallah, if we can put the link up again so that you can put your, is this it? Uh, I believe so, right? Thank Let's you, everybody. So nice to see everybody. Uh, all, all the beautiful people from all over the world, right? Masha, I'm yeah, looking to the chat so right now. Uh, in Northern Ireland, Nigeria, France, North Carolina, Manchester. Yes, wow, mashallah. Durban, Masha Dallas, Masha Texas. <laughs> Dallas, right. <laughs> all right. Uh, thank you so much for coming. Uh, remember, on Monday and Wednesday, we have a, an amazing lineup of speakers. Next week, it's going to be. Uh, sister Megan Rice. Megan Rice, if you know her famous YouTuber who uh, just started a book club with the uh, reading the Quran, she's a non Muslim and it's 16,000 strong. And mashallah, she took her shahada, so you have to tune into that. And then we also, as, like, as a finale, we have Brother. Um, Joe, Joe Bradford, Chick Joe. That just doesn't roll off my tongue somehow, right? So, um, yes, so he cool. has. It, it, it sounds very Texan. Chick, Chick Joe. Joe. Chick Joe, yes. <laughs> Amazing story. Amazing story. So please tune in. If you've missed any of them, you guys, um, it's okay. You don't have to just tune in live. Uh, you can just watch the uh, the replays, inshallah. So very. thank you for joining us today. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullah. Assalamu alaikum. Mm -hmm.